Good morning. Today we are reading from Psalm 21. This is a psalm of victory. Now, as we enter into Psalm 21 in our devotional today, I would like to encourage you to think of Jesus. Think of him reciting Psalm 21, sitting under a tree somewhere, or as he's walking with his disciples in a time of quietness where nobody says anything to each other, and he's thinking of this psalm, meditating on this psalm, speaking this psalm to himself. Also think of Jesus maybe being in the in a synagogue somewhere or in the temple, opening up the text, reading this, thinking of himself, reading himself into the psalm. We need to understand that this psalm was a psalm written by David, but that Jesus Christ lived himself into this as much as what he did in the previous psalm, Psalm 20, which was one of uh, asking for help again. You might think uh, Jesus never need help. No, Jesus, without the help of the Father, would not have been who he is today. The Bible clearly says that Jesus was raised from the dead by the Father. He was raised from the dead by the Spirit or the life of the Father. Jesus even says that what I'm doing, I can't do by myself. It is the Father doing the works. He says, don't, it basically points out that the Father is bringing forth who he is in the earth. Just the word Father means you are born from or what you are, who you are is generated from him. Uh, so Jesus, when he would call God Father, he would call him the source of his very life. And that is the humility and the humbleness that Jesus lived in. He humbled himself and he took upon him the form of a servant. He believed upon the Father. He even learned obedience to the things that he suffered. What that means is to learn obedience to the thing that he suffered, that he has placed himself at a place that he had to obey the Father in order to have life. And without the Father, he could not have life. That is where he was. Now, with that in mind, we are reading Psalm 21. Remember, this is again a Psalm of David. He says, the king rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you gave him. Now think of Jesus. He is walking a dusty road. It is hot. There's maybe some flies that's irritating and frustrating him. There is some disciples that's really not getting what he's trying to do. They are still thinking that he's there to uh, pick up the sword and have victory over Rome uh, in a normal battle and try and get peace to Jerusalem. They don't get what he's saying. He's just healed people. And or he's just multiplied the bread. And as he's now walking, there's already people following him, not really caring on what he said, but they're all just about the bread. They want another multiplication of bread. Now they see that as a form of income and so forth. And he's dealing with all of this. Yet he also knows that he is facing the cross. He's facing a death upon the cross on Golgotha, where he will be rejected, deserted by all his disciples, and where he would hang upon that cross, uh, die the most horrible death. Cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree, thinking of all of that. But what is in his mind? This, this psalm had to also be in his mind. Listen to what is written here. It says, the king rejoices in your strength. Now, Jesus is king. You know, the king rejoices in your strength. How great is your joy, is his joy in the victories you gave him. So Jesus must have thought the father will give me the victory. The father will bring this forth. And he threw himself at the mercy of the father. Mercy means the power to preserve life. Amen. Like the word grace. Verse 2. You have granted him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. Now we're going to see what the request of the lips was that Jesus had here. You came to greet him with rich blessings and place a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked you for life and you gave it to him length of days forever and ever. Isn't that what Jesus is all about? He asked the father for life. Remember Jesus was born of a woman. He was born in this earth like me and you. And as what he was born in this earth just like me and you and going through normal things, uh, I'm sure G Jesus had maybe headaches sometime. I'm sure sometimes he had stomach cramps. I'm sure sometimes he was just thirsty or tired just like all of us. And his request was, Father, give unto me 
eternal life. I want, I know you've promised it to me, but I want to stand up in it. I want my body to be transformed. And I think Jesus could easily have read Psalm 21 verse 4 and see the victory that is promised in Psalm 21 verse 4, where he says, the king asked you for life and you gave it to him length of days forever and ever. So the victories you gave, his glory is great. So he says the king's glory is great. Through what? Through the victory that God gave. You've bestowed upon him splendor and majesty. Surely you've granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Jesus was made glad with the joy of the presence of God. He said, I am going to my God and your God, ascending unto the right hand of God. And he now has the joy of the presence of God. That is what God made him happy with. He experienced the fullness of God bodily. And that was what was promised to Jesus. And as he read Psalm 21, I'm sure he would have seen that for himself. All that I'm trying to say to you today is when you read a text, when you read the Psalms, for instance, read yourself into that text. First of all, I would say the most important is to read it in its original context. In other words, I could read David into this first. Then from there, I can see what does it promise me in the greater scheme of things. In our case, God has promised us the resurrection. God has promised us that life will overtake this planet, will overtake this earth. And what do we do? We see how that will be. We see that we will one day say, yes, we are kings and priests. And yes, as what Jesus stood up out of the grave uh, uh, when he asked the life, we have asked the life. And we now, as kings in the earth, kings and priests who ask God for eternal life. It has been granted unto us length of days forever and ever. And now our splendor is great because of the victories that God has granted unto us. So I want to say to you, as you read the text, read it from the perspective where you know that it is written for David, it was written for the Christ, and you can also see yourself in that being greatly encouraged as you walk the dusty roads of this earth, as you have some flies that might be frustrating, as you have some that might misunderstand you and not see the true intention of your heart, as you feeling the mortality of your own body. As you are in that, see the victory that God has given you in Jesus and rest in that. God bless.